Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Adult Craft Night. My name is Betty McDowell. I'm one of the librarians here at Flutterville Public Library, and I'll be walking you through tonight's project. We're going to be working on mini embroidery hoops that you can turn into pendants. So I'm going to go over the supplies you have in your kit. You should have a small embroidery hoop. You should have a couple of these smaller embroidery hoops, your pendants. This is an embroidery needle, a couple of clips, a couple of pieces of cotton, a variety of different shades of embroidery thread, and some felt. So what you're going to need to do is grab some scissors and a pencil. So the first thing I'm going to sh show you how to do is load your hoop. So we're going to start by practicing some of the stitches that we're going to use for the pendant. But we need to use this bigger hoop to do all of our embroidery because the other ones are just too small. So you take it apart, you put your fabric on top of the smaller circle, then you put this one on top, and you pull it all around. You want to make sure it's pretty tight, and then turn the screw. You want to pull it as you go. You want to make sure it's tight like a drum. So that the fabric doesn't slip around. So that's pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to work on loading your thread. <laughs> so if you have a piece of your thread, you'll notice that it's actually six individual threads twisted together. So when you're doing embroidery, you don't have to use all six threads. You can pull some out so that you're able to do thinner lines, and then if you want to use this whole thing, you'll get some thick lines. So these six um, threads, it's a little thick to go through this needle. This is um, <clears throat> a size five, so the eye is pretty small. So what I've done is just pulled off two threads. So this is how you pull it apart. Just run your finger down the middle. And so now I've pulled apart these two strands. And when we're working on the really small hoops, we're only gonna use one or two strands because they're so small. <clears throat> if you use all of this thread, it'll be really difficult to embroider anything. But for this, I'm going to use four strands, just so that you can see what I'm doing for these stitches. So when you load your needle, you just want to leave a tail. You don't want to knot it or anything because you need it to be able to go through the fabric. What you're going to do is knot the very end. So just do a double knot. If you're using one or two strands, you're probably going to have to do more knots because it's so thin it will just go through the fabric. <clears throat> so you can use your pencil to draw on this. Um, just draw a rectangle for the satin stitch, a circle for the wagon wheel, <clears throat> and then a little leaf shape for the fishbone. And these are the three that I'm gonna focus on for one of the designs. So for the satin stitch you can decide whether you want to stitch this way or this way. But you're just going to start at one end and go over to the other end. And what we're doing with this is just filling in space. So we're going to go back to this side where we started and get as close as we can to that original stitch. And then go to this other side and you want to line it up as easily as you can. I always have trouble with this one because I never quite line up my stitches. Let's see I left a gap here so I'm gonna have to go back in between and fill this in. So 
So you just continue until you fill this whole space in. And you may have to practice it a couple of times because it does take a while to get the hang of it. You do it without leaving gaps or going off of your, uh, your lines. Or you can do this with any shape. I just picked a rectangle because I thought it would be easier to follow along. And as you're working, you may notice that your hoop starts to feel like it's not as tight. So you may have to tighten it up as you're working. Because if it loosens up, that will mess up what your stitches look like in the final product. So you just keep doing that until that whole space is filled in. And you can see, I always end up doing this, but there's a little space there. Fortunately, we're going to be working with really small hoops, so it's not going to matter as much. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on the wheel, and this is one of my favorite stitches, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just grab my four threads. I'm going to use the same color. I'm having trouble getting these on here. Okay. And you should have couple of random pieces, but you decide what colors you want your final product to look like and just use, use the extra for practice. Okay, so for the wagon wheel what we're going to do is um, make five points, kind of like if you're doing a, a star, it's actually that may help, so I'm going to do that. Because you want them evenly placed. And then mark your, your center. So what we're going to do is work, just pick any point and come up, and then go down through the middle. Just do that for all five of these. Now starting at the center, I'm just going to come up with my needle, and it doesn't matter where, as long as it's close to the middle. <clears throat> and we're going to weave this thread through these five points. So the first one you do, okay, so I'm going to go over this one and under this one. And I'm just going to continue. So for the next one, over and then under. And 
and you can spin it as you go. So same thing over this and under this. Over and under. And as you go, you'll start to see it take shape. And you don't have to pull it tightly as you're working. So over and under. you can see it's starting to look more uh, like a flower. There we go. So for this, you would <clears throat> just keep going until you fill in all of this space. Right? And then once you're done, see. let's pretend that I filled this whole thing in. <clears throat> once you're done, you would just go to the back here. Run your needle through once and twice to tie it off, and then cut it. Okay. <clears throat> so for our next one, we're going to be working on the fish bone. So you're going to draw kind of a teardrop shape, and we're going to come up at the top. And so they go down to about here. Okay, so there's your first stitch. The next thing we're going to do is come up from the right side. <coughs> and you're just going to try to follow the line that you made. And so it's off to the side and a little bit lower than that first stitch. And you're going to put it down right below where you ended the first stitch. And for the next one, <clears throat> you'll come up on the opposite side. And you're going to come down, and this should end below the stitch you just did. 
so it may help you once you get started to draw a line down the center just so you can keep track of where you're supposed to end up. And you're just going to continue that. Come up on the right side and below the last stitch. Do the same on the opposite side. Sorry about that. Okay, so there is our fish bone. So I'm going to come around the back and just tie this off. So these are the main stitches we're going to be using. So now we're going to unload this. load our other piece of fabric. So this is going to be the fabric that we're using for our pendants. So actually before I load it, what I want to do is get this out and we're going to assemble it. So these two pieces, this is the one that is actually going to have the fabric around it with your design. This one that's just a little bit larger just goes on the back to cover this up. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to trace this a few times with my pencil. 
Just so that I know how big I can make the design. And you have two of these, so I'm going to do a couple different examples, but you can put whatever you want on them. You do want to leave some space around it um, because that is going to wrap around this and we're going to glue it. <clears throat> so actually maybe better to go around like this because otherwise I may forget. this around as needed. <clears throat> so I'm going to just use this one. Now, so I'll load this on here. I need to adjust this. So what I'm going to do is a couple of the little wagon wheels. I'm just going to make a couple of small circles. And in between them, I want to do a leaf. So I'm making a little teardrop shape for the fish bone. Do another circle here. And we're gonna do another smaller fish bone. And for these, I'm gonna go ahead and do my points. So because these are so small, it's not going to take very long to do them. The reason I use pencil is because, i actually go back and erase this, but they make markers that you can get at the craft store that disappear with water. So I like those a lot too. And once you're done with your design, you just rinse it off and all of your markings come off. So I'm going to make this bigger one, it's kind of pink color, and this is three threads, and I've already knotted it, so I'm just going to get started. Points, and I'm going to come up close to the center. And start my wheel. So I'm going to go this way. Go over one. 
under another. This is pretty much filled in. And this is our first flower. So what I'm going to do is just go through the back and make a knot. And that is 
is a super messy knot, but it is tied off, so I'll cut this. And I'm going to do the same thing with my smaller flower. I'm going to use this darker color. You can also use this one. Um, you can actually do all three but I'm just doing a couple to save time, so. Going to my smaller circle. I'm going to do my five points. the center. And this one's not going to take long. Finish this one off. <laughs> so I've got my two flowers, and now I'm going to do my leaves. So looking at this, I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to my green thread. Okay, 
so I didn't want to do all of these leaves to make the video super long, so I've done a couple of smaller fish bones in there just to fill in space, and now I'm going to do this larger one. I'm going to try not to go too close to the edge. So I'm going to put just one short stitch and then come up on the other side. Of course, this is much smaller, so it's not going to look exactly the same as this one. This looks more detailed, but it'll still look like a leaf. side and do the same. to run into these smaller leaves and I'm just going on top of them. So that is it. I'm going to tie this off. So if you have more room or more space, you can add more flowers. I'm just going to finish this one up. off. Just so that I can go to the next design. We're going to do just a quick little mushroom design. So actually, I'm going to run into this over here. thread. So that's what I'm going to use for this. So I'm just going to draw my little cap. some of my red thread. So I've got my red thread and I'm going to start here at the top and this is going to be a satin stitch. So I'm going to start at the very top. And this is a curved line so it is going to be a little bit more difficult than working on a rectangle. I'm just going to start with a really small stitch like that and then work your way down. And this is, uh, this is three threads. I should have said that, sorry. And just try not to leave gaps. Thank you. 
So as I get closer to this, I want to leave a little bit of a space. So I'm just drawing these lines here. Because this is going to be a different color. So instead, for my next stitch, instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to go to right here. This is the part where you can see a curved line. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same. So there's our red. So I'm going to tie this off. And then I'm going to be working with the white thread. So now I've got a white thread and we're going to be doing a satin, a satin stitch for this stem. go in the opposite direction. So I should have started just a little bit higher, so I'm going to fill this space and fix that. So for this one, I'm not going, because it's kind of a weird shape, some parts are curved and some are not. I'm not at treating it like a rectangle, so some of my lines are not going to be completely straight. Which means I may have to fill in space later, so I'm going to go over to the edge here and fill this in. and then fill in these spaces that I missed. Okay, so I've got the stem there, and now what I'm going to do is fill this space in here. So you know the underside is kind of a lighter color. So I'm going to do a satin stitch, but I'm going to come from over here and go towards the middle. This is a really small space. So it's only going to be a couple of stitches. And we can do the same on the other side. I think I went a little too low with my red thread, so I'm just going to go over. There's our basic mushroom, and then if you want to go in and add some dots, just go in. 
And because we did our satin stitch this way, I'm going to do the dots with the thread running in the opposite direction just because they won't show up. They'll kind of get lost in the red if we do it in the same direction. Just a couple of stitches for each spot. And I'm just placing them in random spots throughout here. So here's our little bitty mushroom. I'm just going to finish this off. And then I'm going to show you how to put it on the hoop. So you've got these really small hoops. And what I'm going to do is cut your designs out. Remember to leave some space around. So now you've got your designs cut out. I'm going to take this. And you're going to add one of the little really tiny bolts. And you're just going to screw it on all the way to the end. I'm going to pass it through here. I'm going to take the other one and screw this on. You don't want to screw it too tightly, uh, but just leave it kind of loose for now. And you're going to take one of your designs and the smaller of the two circles and put the mushroom. And you're going to center it. If you've got pencil marks that you want to erase, now would be a good time to do that. And you're going to wrap this around. And this is just going to get glued on. So you should have a little container of glue. And it's this tacky glue, but yours is just a small, small container. Oh, goodness, that's too much glue. <laughs> and you're going to apply your glue and a little bit on the back, too. Just center your design in here and wrap the extra fabric around. And if you want to trim it down more, you can. Just try not to get too much glue on your fingers because then it'll end up all over your design. wrapping this around and some more glue on the back. The 
luckily it does dry clear, so. Once it's dry, it shouldn't show up. So now, I'm going to put this in my hoop. And it should fit just like that. in there. So you can take either a q-tip or something to apply some glue around the edge just to make sure this stays where it's supposed to. No one's going to see the back so you can put as much glue as you want. And now you have a choice for how you want to finish it. You can either glue this to the back or you have a couple of pieces of felt so you can trace this, cut out the felt, and then apply that to the back so it has a nice soft um, backing. But I'm just going to use the wood. And this is just so no one sees the back. So that seals it up. And then if you need to, if this isn't tight enough, you can screw this on. Tighter. I may have to use some little pliers, but you don't want to screw it too tight because this wood is, this little hoop is so small it could snap. So you just want to make sure it's secure in there. Okay, and then that is ready for your necklace, so you'll just run the, run the necklace through there, and this is ready to wear. And I forgot to mention if uh, you're whether you're using the felt or the uh, wood here, these clips will just hold everything in place until the glue sets. So just stick these on. So I just leave that for a few hours um, until the glue sets. And while I'm here, before I go, I just want to show you there are all sorts of different shapes that you can get with these. So these are just from the craft store. Now these don't have a wooden back, so for something like this you would have to use felt to kind of finish it off, but it gives you a bigger space to work with, and they're really cute. So this is another design I did, and this is just a little bookshelf, and this is pretty much all satin stitch all of the little books as well as the little pot and then these are just random leaf shapes there's no uh, specific stitch for that so be creative and i would love to see what you end up with if you want to send me a picture that would be awesome i hope you had fun next month we're going to be working with clay to make a book charm so i'll see you next month